So the real test of Rebel Moon is how long it sort of sustains itself from part one to part two, and then part two, week one to week two, in terms of viewership. Uh, it's not looking great. It's not looking great. I think the egg is on Netflix's face. So Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon part two, the scar giver viewership has plummeted in the second week on Netflix, uh, to be expected. So viewership for Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon part two, scar giver plummeted, uh, film's second week on the streaming service. Film debuted at the top of Netflix's English language film chart week premiering, bringing in 44.2 million hours viewed and 21.4 million views. <laughs> However, in second week, it fell to 38.8 million hours and only 18.8 million views, which is still big numbers, but that is a decline uh, of 12.2% in total hours watched and 12.1% in total views. So quite a lot, um, quite a lot, actually. Now, it says here, you might not think that decline is significant. However, you've got to go back and compare it to the first one because obviously you compare them like for like. It's a continuation of the story. If they don't you know, perform identical, people have dropped off. And if they also drop off significantly from the second week to the first week to the second week, then it's even worse as well. So the first film uh, took 54.1 million hours viewed. Uh, and then 23.9 million views in its, sec in its second week. Total hours viewed actually increased to 77 million hours and 34 million views. So it was an increase, quite a large increase. That's a 42.3% increase in total hours viewed and total viewers. So that's right. The second week for the first film saw an increase in total hours viewed and viewership compared to the second film seeing a decline so not great um yeah many <laughs> netflix originals... <laughs> yeah, apt because a, a lot of original films do see an increase in their second week actually compared to their first week because the first week is usually only a single weekend while the second week also includes the whole week so for example Leave the World Behind debuted at the beginning of December, 98.7 million hours viewed, 41.7 million views. Second week, 106.2 million uh, views, uh, and then 44.2 million, or 44.9 million, sorry. So you can see quite a big drop off, actually. That, that's real bad. The fact that it didn't even increase is horrendous. The fact that it declined, bad, real bad. Um, so... Rebel Moon Part 2 Scar Diver bucked a, uh, a trend that typically sees Netflix original films perform better in their second week. If you compare the total hours viewed between the two films, it reveals a nearly 37% decline in total hours viewed from 131.1 million to 40.2 million. Uh, this reduction in viewership appears to confirm early reporting from analytics firm Samba TV, which indicated that the second film had around a 40% fall off from the first film. Real bad. I do not think Netflix is going to fund any more of this shit moving forwards, basically. But it's just interesting because, you know, when this film came out, the first one, people were saying, it's amazing, it's a huge success. And I was like, yeah, maybe. But also, I think people hate watched it. And I also think that the real tale will be moving forwards, what happens uh, with the second film. So we've now had that revealed to us. Culture, as soon as you bug it off for a little bit, what do you reckon to this? It's funny, nonetheless, but yeah. Well, it, it's amusing, but it's unsurprising. Um, Zach, as Tom has probably already communicated and does pretty much daily now, uh, Zach is a straight-to-video uh, straight to video or straight-to-streaming director. Anything he offers, especially if he writes it, is substandard. And uh, there's very little of, uh, of, of much to it. Uh, one of the reasons that he's able to uh, produce uh, immense amounts of content that drags on and on is because of his prolific use of slow motion. Uh, that's the only thing he seems to understand. Yeah. So if you bore an audience often enough and for long enough, they're not going to consume your product anymore. And to be fair, Zach is boring. He's a one trick pony and he hasn't done anything good since 300. And the only reason that was good is because he didn't write it. So it's right enough. There's an adaptation, um, wasn't it? Yeah. And so, look, I mean, you know, he leaned heavily into the politics 
I think his brain got broken uh, when he lost his child. Um, and I think he's still stuck wherever he was at that moment in time. I think there's a, there's a bit of trauma to that, that he will never be able to shake. And instead of, you know, continuing on in a career that might have moved forwards, he's stuck where he was. Could be other reasons he's stuck where he is. Maybe he's always been stuck there, but it seemed like there was a progression in his in his uh, filmmaking. But again, I, like I said, I was not going to see this. I'm never going to see this, and I didn't miss anything. No, you did. You missed the massive spaceship powered by literal coal fires oh yeah no i i I watched you i watched people talk about you know boiler boiler why are you in a boiler room on a spaceship i just yeah yeah i don't know and the tiny little wheel that they were spinning to move the incredibly large turret gun aboard their spaceship as well like for fuck's sake honestly guy such a wanker uh, anyway, uh, Bo, thoughts on this? I mean, it's not yeah. really something that you watch, I'm sure, but I guess it's just interesting. Yeah, figure, no, uh, absolutely. I, anyway. Yeah, I've seen uh, a, a bunch of clips and a bunch of reviews from it, and um, there's a, there's a, it's very difficult to do slow well. It's very, very difficult. There's a great film uh, from the early 2000s called Jerry by Gus Van Sant. I don't know if you ever saw it. It's got Matt Damon in it and Casey Affleck. Okay. It, 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 it didn't do very well. It wasn't particularly, it's not famous or anything. But it's extremely, extremely slow. There's hardly any dialogue in it. And hmm. I think it's really, really good because it's done well. It's done, done by a sort of a master of it mm. there's some other films i've mentioned i've mentioned perhaps a little too often very old film called uh, the spy that came in from the cold no black and white richard burton film again very very slow minimal dialogue but it's done brilliant it's written and acted and directed brilliantly and so it works mm. uh, but when things are just slow and boring for their own sake uh um, meandering then, yeah then i had to watch some of that ashoka no oh. you know, the star wars thing and it's like no, just because something, just because you're taking it very, very slow and and uh, pausing on extremely long shots, are very, very, very artistic long shots. It doesn't, it doesn't make it good in and of itself. Mm. You each, everyone on this panel has probably got a few examples in their own mind of quite slow, slow burn films that are actually that actually work very well. Um, I, I know it's a, again a different. A different beast sort of thing, but you ever seen Paul Cartsy or Kairu Cartsy? They're not the same as sort of a normal character or plot driven films, but but again, very slow. Um, mm. if it's done well, it can be brilliant. Everything I've seen about Rebel Moon, everything I've heard and seen, it's it's not that, it's not a masterpiece, it's self indulgent and boring. Just because something's slow, it doesn't necessarily mean it's boring, could be could be yeah. fascinating, could be captivating. Doesn't look like Rebel Moon is, and I've got no real intention of, of, of you know, spending my time on it. Yeah, yeah. Def- definitely don't do it to yourself. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, karma's a bitch, ain't it? Um, <laughs> no. Zach. I mean, what can I say that I haven't said about the guy already? special guy his star wars killer just ain't cutting it is it uh i I guess i'll just be kind of nice to the whole thing and say well so much for part three four five and six huh that's true yeah he wanted to make six bloody six total of them for god's sake outrageous outrageous oh dear oh dear yeah this will be dead i I do wonder what will happen because there's supposed to be a game as well a uh, Rebel Moon game coming out um, and some other stuff. And Zack Snyder's got like an overlook de- uh, overall deal, first look deal with Netflix. And that's, yeah, I bet they're kicking themselves now. They're like, fuck, why do we give this guy money? <laughs> like, shit. Um, Sci-Fi Quest says uh, Snyder Moon falls in two parts, fails in two parts, sorry. Looking forward to hating the six hours to come. <laughs> oh, dear. 
Uh, he also says the cracked lens early in part two. How could you miss that in editing? Yeah. Uh, Stumpy says, to be fair, he is mental and the film was rubbish. I can't argue with it. Stumpy, my dude. I cannot argue with it. Um, absolutely brilliant stuff. Thank you for uh, everyone's input there. 